Hey guys, Eric here. If you've beaten the game and want to start over, or if you want to just start over period, then there's a few things that are worth knowing. Now this game isn't so hard that you can completely screw yourself or get put into an unwinnable position, but there are things that can help you avoid busy work. Uh, they can keep your people alive and keep yourself from going nuts chasing around objectives like chickens with their heads cut off. Somebody's got to cut through the cacophony. Well, it ain't gonna be me, but I can give you some tips at least. This video is meant for people with at least some passing knowledge about how this game works, so I'll try to be clear about what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to explain every system that comes up either. So when you first get started, be sure to re-roll the random survivors at startup to get some of the best skills. When you start up a new community that's not in the tutorial, you get the option to roll three random survivors. Uh, if you've already beaten the game, you can bring in a hero from a previous settlement so that's also good, but they're only heroes, not just regular people. So either way, the main things you're going to want to look for are the special skills, the one below the four main skills. The skills you're really going to want to start with are computers, chemistry, gardening, and the big one is medicine. These skills are required to get higher level structures in your base, and just having characters to start with these skills, it makes your life just a little bit easier. Now when you find a base, the first one is always the same, so you're going to want to build an infirmary and a workshop. And if you find a portable generator upgrade, like a mod, then use that on the workshop, as it's the only facility where power is really pretty useful. Remember that these mods require one gas per day, and every separate generator needs to be filled up in order to work. Now another thing to keep in mind is that you should really only bother moving once. It costs a lot of influence to move your base, and really you don't want to waste your time having to farm for influence, so just use it sparingly and save it for one of the two best bases. Either the large base, which you can't customize very much, or the massive base, which you can customize a lot. Uh, regarding influence, you should generally attempt to support other enclaves. Doing missions for them nets you influence, and you might be able to get better survivors too. Oh, and you get rucksacks for completing missions for them too. This is something that took me forever to notice, but you can do that. Usually they just drop it on the ground when they stop following you, so it can be easy to miss, but be sure to get those rucksacks. Oh, and while I'm talking about it, ignore strangers if you don't need new recruits, just focus on helping enclaves. You don't have any negative effect if you ignore the strangers' requests, they just eventually go away, so just save yourself some grief and don't bother with them. So when it comes to morale, don't bother clearing out infestations. It's better just to focus on getting goods and doing favors for members of your community and just making them happy that way. I found that ignoring them doesn't have a particularly damaging effect on your base, other than there are just a few more zombies around. Another good thing to do is, uh, once you've got the ability to do it, is just roll around and find all the survey sites. Knowing where everything is just makes it a lot easier to respond to shortages if and when they pop up, and this is especially handy for dealing with plague hearts. So to quickly deal with plague hearts, build firecrackers. Firecrackers are really easy to make and insanely powerful, they're probably the best item in the entire game. They're real cheap to make and when you throw them zombies are always distracted, unless they're the special kind of zombies, the freaks. As in, even if they're right in your heels attacking you, if you throw a firecracker then they'll just turn around and chase that instead. So combine firecrackers with a pipe or soda can bombs and you should be able to deal with play cards pretty easily. Uh, regarding guns, after going through every survey site, immediately check out any excavation sites, military comms, or police stations you find, as those tend to have the best weapons. Gun stores are okay for small arms and ammo, but these other places I mentioned are way more likely to give you military weapons like assault rifles, while police stations always seem to have a shotgun lying around someplace. So with an upgraded workshop, definitely think about getting a silencer and equipping them to revolvers or bolt action rifles. An interesting thing about this game is that revolvers and bolt actions don't lose durability, like at all. So slapping a silencer on them mitigates the durability effect of having a silencer on a gun. So yeah, these guns get all the benefits of a silencer without any of the drawbacks. So the only issue with that is finding revolvers and ammo can be a little tricky, but bolt action rifles are pretty common, they're not that hard to get, and silencers are great for those, so it's all good either way. And that's all I've really got to add. 
State of Decay 2 has some weird systems, so hopefully some of this helps you cut out some of the chuffed and just get to the fun stuff underneath. Or break the game over your knee, I don't know. It's all good to me.